Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's real estate tip. With us today is Nick Ludwig with Dolliff Insurance. How are you doing, Nick? Good. How are you? I'm awesome. So we're going to talk about insuring a foreclosure, and we're going to talk about it specifically from the perspective of I'm buying a foreclosure, me as a buyer, and what kind of insurance should I need? But then also we might touch upon the uh, what happens when a property goes in foreclosure and is it insured. So, uh, but focus really on you know the buying side. Like so, so sure. Nick, you tell me like I'm going to buy a foreclosure. Uh, probably going to need some work. The water's off. Utilities right. are off and stuff. What kind of like does every insurer cover that automatically, or do I need to get like a special kind of policy? Yeah, not every insurance company likes uh, properties, particularly if depending on how long they've been vacant, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you get a property that's unfortunately that's been vacant for a long time, and as you know better than me, you know the longer those properties are vacant, all things being equal, chances are there there is some deterioration. Right. Yeah, homes are really made to be lived in. I know that seems like uh, an obvious statement. But the longer they're vacant, the more things go wrong. That's right, yeah. And so insurance companies will look carefully at properties that have been vacant for a while. And, uh, and, and on, that, on the other hand, if the property, you know, uh, somebody moved out fairly recently and now you bought the property, you got a little bit of a fix-up you got to do, some cosmetic stuff, nothing really structural, nothing really major, well, then they, they don't necessarily are, are uh, uninsurable or even difficult to insure. Very, very often you'll see somebody, particularly, you know, a first-time home buyer, they're buying a little bit of a smaller property perhaps. Maybe it hasn't been lived in for a few months, mm -hmm. but usually it's okay. The heat's on, everything is still good. You do an inspection, everything looks good, right? Yeah, just the fact that it's a foreclosure doesn't, ne doesn't mean that's it's right. a fixer-upper or even, you know, that it's a that, distressed condition. I mean, it could be a mint condition for all we right. know. So it really does depend, right? Yeah. And so now here, and here's some of the criteria where it gets a little tricky. For example, you've got a, you've got something that you just bought and you're intending, you're either going to live in it eventually or you're going to rent it out. And, uh, but it really needs a lot of work and it's going to be vacant and occupied for that period of time. So in that case, very typically in the insurance side, we will put a special policy on it. We'll put a builder's risk policy or we'll put a policy that covers course of construction, mm -hmm. uh, insurance on the course of construction. And that will be a little bit more expensive, obviously. But uh, when you know that it's going to be more than cosmetic, we're going to be taking some walls down, we're going to be replacing a lot of mechanicals, perhaps windows, roof, uh, maybe you uh, need foundation work, th things like that. That gets a little more serious and the mm -hmm. insurance companies want a little more premium for that. And so, and we're talking typically it's a short term thing. I mean, you know, right. five six months max for most people. But unless for most gonna... things, although you know, you see, I've seen some uh, larger properties. You know, particularly in our in our part of the world here, where Lake of the Isles or on Summit, you've got an old mansion, and people are are working on reconstructing that thing and rebuilding that thing, and it takes them several years. I was going to say it takes years in a lot of that's, cases. That's right? right. So those are oh, there are the exceptions, but you're right. Smaller kind of average home. Get in there quick, get the work done, get it fixed up. and. and so key problem. points would be if someone were to purchase a foreclosure, you know, assuming it needed some construction work, um, number one, you want to be very clear as to your intentions, right? So that way you don't start a, even a light rehab project. Someone gets hurt or right. something gets damaged and then you find out you're not covered. They should be disclosing that up front exactly. and then getting, you know, getting the correct insurance for what their intentions are. That's right. And, and again, if it's, and if it's serious stuff or even halfway serious stuff and you got a contractor involved, get a signed contract with a contractor. Make sure they have insurance covering them and covering you for things that happen during the construction or reconstruction. So what, what do you want to, that's a good segue. Do, what do you want to look for in your contract? Do you want like workman's comp and like liability certificate, something like that's that? That's right. You, you absolutely want general liability insurance from your contractor as well as workers' compensation. And you may even want them to have their own property insurance insuring that property or aspects of that property, particularly if you're putting a lot of new stuff in it right. where you want them to say, look, at it, it, before that stuff gets installed, it's really, you may have bought it already, but it's not installed, and so it may not be covered by your policy, should be covered by the contractor's policy, right? Right. And so, so those things are called installation floaters, or even contractors can do their own builder's risk insurance. 
And so, yeah, but that's what. So you an want. example Property would be, you know, the the furnace. Someone like leaves the water run overnight or something, yeah, and it yeah. wrecks the brand new furnace or furnaces. And if it's a big enough home, and yes. the contractor's insurance would cover that. Right. So you want to make sure that the contractor. You know, names you as an insured, right? Or maybe carries, but but l- let's step back a, uh, a bit because there's a lot here. So, uh, just to summarize, where uh, what people should do. Number one, I would say is they want to disclose what their intent are is in the property, right? That's right. What are they going to do? What kinds of things are going to repair or fix? Is it going to be structural? You know, how how much repair or reconstruction is going to be going on at this property, and for how long is it going to be vacant or unoccupied? Right. So they get the appropriate coverages, right. and then. You would want to then make sure that you are working with contractors who have the correct, li- the correct licenses and insurances, right? That's correct. Okay, and, and, and those can be workman's comp, liability, and, and, and sometimes if the, if the job is big enough, maybe having their own um, hazard policy or on That's the right, property. That's right, property policy, right, that not only that protects that property, whether they are still the owner of it or they've transferred ownership to you, or even they can insure the entire property themselves while it's under construction or reconstruction. Yeah, be wary of the taillight warranty contractor, the guy who, yeah, if you ask for these, this is a stand. This is and this is me editorializing a little bit, but this is like not uncommon at all. Like any no. any reputable contractor, in my opinion, will provide this right readily. In fact, maybe we'll provide it without you even asking. I would argue that. That's right, although sometimes you got to ask them because, you know, it's not cheap insurance for contractors either either and sometimes contractors, you know, some of them are running a little thin, but but yeah, it's important coverage to have because it's not only going to it's not it's going to protect both of you in the case something happens during the construction of that project. Okay. Awesome. So, Nick this has been great. What if somebody wants to learn more? What is the best way to get a hold of you? Sure. You can call me at 952-593-7400 or email me at nludwig, that's N-L-U-D-W-I-G, at Dolliff insurance, or Dolliff.com, that's D-O-L-L-I-F-F.com. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. And I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group. We hope this content has been useful. You can reach us at 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888, call or text or 24-7 online at verde-realestate.com. If we can be of the further service, please let us know. Thank you.